All right, what we're going to be talking about now is inside versus outside picking. And this is something you're going to see a lot if you start getting into doing three note per string patterns on the guitar. So what we need to understand here is, is basically when we're trying to play three note per string, right? When we do something like this, of, of any sort of capacity, whatever you might be working on. Usually when you're dealing with pentatonics, you're doing something like this. And you're doing two notes on each string. When you do three notes on each string, you come into an, a, a situation where the pick is going to wind up doing what we call inside and outside picking. Let me show you what I mean. Let's just pick a spot on the guitar and look at this a little bit. So I'm going to go up to the fifth fret of the second string and I'm going to play five, seven, eight, five, seven, eight, like this. Okay, so in order to, to get comfortable with this idea, what I have to do is think about what I'm actually doing with my guitar pick, which is down, up, down, and then I'm doing up, down, up. And again, this is just called alternate picking. Basically, what you're trying to do is tr teach yourself how to just continually keep the pick moving regardless of switching strings. So as I go down, up, down, up, down, up, okay, what happens is the hardest part about this for most people is the transition from the second string to the first string. So when I go, let's just focus on that for now, okay? So I'm playing down, up, down, up. So the first thing, of course, I've got to synchronize my hands and my fingers and all these other things need to happen too in order to be able to gain speed and, you know, synchronization between my hands and all these sorts of things. But let's just break down what's actually happening here. If I think about it as I'm playing this, I'm going down, up, down, up. So I'm playing the last note on the second string, which is my pinky, I'm playing it down. And then the first note of the first string, which is my first finger, is up. So if you think about it, I'm playing down and then up. We call that playing to the outsides. When you play on the insides of the strings, it means that you're stuck inside two strings. When you play on the outsides, you're playing out here. So if you think about it, as I play this down and this up, I'm on the outsides of these two strings. Okay, and that works out really well. Now, if I go the other direction, let's say I was playing this same five, seven, eight, but I'm starting at the eighth fret of the first string and I'm working my way backwards. So now I've got down, up, down, up. Same principle, right? It ends with a down on the first string and then it starts with an upstroke on the second string, okay? But now if you think about it as you're doing this, you're doing down and up, so you're stuck in between these two strings. You're not playing on the outsides now, you're playing on the insides. And the, the point I'm trying to make is it's very important for you to become aware of this as you play, because if you're always practicing one direction, like let's just say you're doing this. And you're always practicing going toward the floor, right? As you're practicing your scales. You're always practicing playing on the outsides as you move. Down, down, now watch this right there. When I go down, down, and then this next one is an up. So I'm playing on the outside. Okay. But when I start on this uh, fifth string now on that upstroke, and I continue on. Well, now I'm caught on the insides. So the sixth string and the fifth string starts with playing on the outsides, but when because I'm starting with an upstroke on the fifth string, the next two strings I wind up on the insides. And then the outside, then the inside, and so on as I keep moving. So oftentimes when people are practicing uh, scales, three and upper string patterns, whatever it might be, they're not aware of the fact that the pick, they're thinking they're doing alternate picking, which they are. We are. But we're not aware of the fact that there's actually two vastly different things happening. When we start with a down and we're playing toward the floor, okay, I wind up on the outsides. But when I get to the next set of strings, if I'm starting with that up that I left off on, well, now I wind up on the insides of the strings, you see? So it's important to get used to those. Well, how can we do that? Well, one way is just simply practicing what I'm doing right now. I could simply practice 
And maybe I don't do all the strings. Maybe I, I do. But I could just practice the two groups that I know I need. This one, which gives me the outside. And that one, starting with the upstroke, gives me the inside. So if I just practice those two groups together. And try and get comfortable with being able to feel those two. The, the down or the outside on this one and the ups the uh, inside on that one now again you can play three strings or four strings or whatever makes sense in your head in terms of developing a pattern okay if you want to break it down even more a really easy way to do this is to simply practice doing what we did in the beginning which is just move toward the floor playing five seven eight <laughs> to develop that outside picking. Now you could even break that down even further instead of just playing five, seven, eight, five, seven, eight. What we really need out of that is this eight and this five, right? That's what we really need. So maybe we just make a pattern. I'm gonna show you two different patterns that you can practice. One is just going around Robin like this. over and over and over again being aware of that outside picking and the other one is this I can just go now I'm doing is playing five seven eight five eight seven five I'm just returning so I wind up with six notes one two three four five six one two three four five six one two three so as I start all over again the picking is consistent, so I'm always playing to the outsides. And then what I used to do is I would take these two patterns that I'm showing you right now, and then I would just interchange them like this. You see over and over and over just practicing that. Okay, so that is a couple of different options that you can do to develop the outside picking of this three note per string idea. So the next thing is we want to start trying to develop inside picking. So what we can do is take this same idea. We could practice this. So we're getting, again, one outside, one inside. Normally what I would do is I would play two full patterns. So I'd play sixth and fifth string um, and then fourth and third string. So I'm going... Because I tend to think of everything in three note per string uh, as two strings. So I've got this and this. It's just that it's important to understand that those two pieces are connecting with an inside movement. Okay, so it's just important to think about that a little bit. Um, but if we want to just develop each one independently, again, I can go back to this thing I was just doing, but I'm just going to do it backwards. So I'm going... Okay, and I'm just developing moving down, up, down, up, down, up, which is the same motion I've been doing the whole time, but just understanding that my pick is now going to be inside those strings when I make the transition from first to second string. And how that feels, okay? Now I could do the same idea that I showed you going toward the floor. I could do this. And just make that pattern over and over and over, okay? Or combine the two. Okay? And, and again, it's just really important to understand this because if you, if you start moving into the diatonic, you know, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, modes, all these different kinds of things, what tends to start happening is you start dealing with three notes on a string versus two notes because when you play two note, you get more of a pentatonic thing, obviously. And as you move into playing three note, you're playing more notes, which winds up being diatonic. And this is a really great way of learning how to get around the fretboard, utilizing these various patterns. So you're learning to play, if, again, if you think about it, you're, you're kind of learning how to play blocks of two strings, right? And then those blocks just connect together. But the way they connect together is either being on the outsides of the strings or on the insides of the strings. So for instance, what I like to do, and I do it all the time, either I'll do patterns that will move up and down the fretboard this way. 
So let's say, for instance, I was doing something like this. So I'm playing like in G major, right? Or, uh, well, it, you could look at it any way you want to, but we'll call this G major, okay? So I'm going... And I don't have to speed up or anything. I can just play it the same way over and over and over. But what I'm doing is playing... Again, you'd have to know the scale, and I don't want to get into that right now. I just want you to understand the shape that I'm playing. I'm playing 2, 4, 5, 4, 5, 7, and then 5, 7, nine. And even just those, those three are enough, okay? In case you don't know all your scales and things to get all confusing and get off in the weeds on a different conversation. If you're just doing... Now, if you think about it, you're going down, up, down, up, down, up. Each time. Okay? So, what I'm doing is playing outside. So, Of course, I could do this all over the fretboard on all sorts of different kinds of strings, sets of two strings, right? I could do it here. Again, relative to the scale that I'm playing in. And I, I, I don't want you going off in the weeds on the wrong thing. What I want you to focus on is learning how to do this picking and being aware of playing to the outsides or playing to the inside, okay? So, what I can do then is take this idea, and obviously if I did it backwards, it's going to be a little bit harder, but it's going to give me the inside idea. Okay? But here's a really cool thing that you can do to develop both of these. Okay? Outside picking and inside picking. What you do is, you start off doing the 2-4-5 that I just showed you. And then you move up and you play it backwards. So you create like a little square there where you're just going... So I'm playing outsides on this one and insides on this one. So I have outside, inside. Okay. So and then I'll just make like various figure eights. I might do something where I go up and down. Okay, so again, the big thing with all of this is, 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 depending on what kind of player you are, you become attracted to all of these different movements and different things like that, which is great, but then it starts sidetracking what the, the, the purpose of it is, right? So when I think of what we're talking about, this whole conversation, there's really three things that we're talking about. One is the technique of alternate picking. Number two is the, the awareness of understanding inside or outside picking relative to the, the pattern that you're doing. And then the third thing are the patterns themselves, whether or not you're learning how to play a scale or you're just learning how to play a small block of something, whatever it might be. And you can see how your, your brain might go, well, I, wonder, I wanna know more about those blocks, and which is great. But now all of a sudden you're not dealing with the element of the picking itself. Now you're dealing with visualization and memorization and maybe some theory and different things like that. So what I want you to be aware of as you're practicing this is what is your goal? My goal for you is to understand inside and outside picking and how they work, okay? That doesn't mean that that might not lead to another conversation for you or another thought where you want to start learning more about three note string patterns or blah, 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 which is great, but don't forget the original idea. If it spawns other ideas and inspires you to do something else, that's wonderful, okay? But understand the purpose of it so, you know, within the next few weeks or whatever it might be as you're practicing this, you're further developing that technique uh, so you can use it in your songs or songs that you're learning how to play or just whatever it might be, you know, your improvisation or anything like that.